Imagine sleek, high-tech cars racing through iconic cityscapes like New York, Paris, and Hong Kong, silently pushing the boundaries of speed and technology. That's what Formula E is all about. In today's video, we're diving deep into this electrifying series, exploring how it's not only thrilling audiences worldwide, but also leading the charge toward a sustainable future in motorsport. Stay tuned to discover why Formula E could be the key to the next era of racing. Ready for a glimpse into the future? Let's get started. Are Formula One cars faster than Formula E cars? Absolutely. Formula One cars are currently faster than Formula E cars, though the gap is narrowing due to ongoing technological advancements. According to a November 2022 Autosport article, the fastest speed ever recorded by a Formula One car was 397.36 km per hour, achieved at the 2016 Mexican Grand Prix. Meanwhile, the most recent Formula E car, the Gen 3 model from 2022, reached a top speed of 322 km per hour. In terms of acceleration, Formula E cars can go from 0 to 100 km per hour in 2.8 seconds, while Formula One cars can do the same in 2.6 seconds. It's a difference that will surely continue to shrink. What is the difference between Formula One, DRS, and Formula E's attack mode? Overtaking is one of the most thrilling moments in any race, both for drivers and spectators. Both Formula One and Formula E have technological features designed to help drivers gain extra speed when needed. In Formula One, this technology is known as the Drag Reduction System, or DRS. DRS allows drivers to open the rear wing of the car by nearly half with the press of a button, reducing drag and providing a speed boost during overtaking. Formula E has its own version of this technology, called Attack Mode. Similar to DRS, Attack Mode gives Formula E drivers a temporary boost of power for daring overtakes. How does it work? In designated attack mode zones on each Formula E circuit, drivers can press a button on their steering wheel to increase their power output by 50 kilowatts. The rules surrounding attack mode vary from circuit to circuit, adding an extra layer of excitement and unpredictability as teams must adapt their race strategies on the fly. Should Formula E fear F1's 2026 rules? Formula One's 2026 technological framework, which embraces a much more prominent focus on electrification, may raise concerns about the long-term viability of Formula E. The potential negative consequences for the electric championship are not yet fully understood. In the 2026 F1 engines, power will be evenly split between the internal combustion engine and the MGUK. The MGUK's output will nearly triple, from 120 kilowatts to 300 kilowatts, while the V6 engine's output will be slightly reduced from 540 kilowatts to 400 kilowatts. This shift will necessitate the use of a much larger battery. As part of its environmental mission, Formula One will heavily promote this increased reliance on electric power, making it even harder for Formula E to differentiate itself on the global motorsport stage. Of course, Formula E has a much smaller fan base than Formula One. This autumn, Formula E, the world's only all-electric global motorsport championship, celebrates its 10th anniversary. However, Formula E may face more challenges as Formula One strengthens its messaging around electric vehicles. To secure the future of the championship and the manufacturers it represents, Formula E needs a significant boost in its narrative, despite the strides it has made so far. Is all electric still a relevant concept? Market forecasts were missed by 13%, and Tesla, the king of EV automakers, saw its first decline in deliveries in four years, resulting in a 10% reduction in its workforce earlier this year. The global adoption rate of EVs is under pressure, and many other automakers are scaling back their EV plans in favor of plug-in hybrids, acknowledged Elon Musk, Tesla's founder and CEO, when addressing investor concerns. However, prior to the first quarter of 2024, the global outlook was somewhat different, with Tesla often viewed as a bellwether for confidence in the future of EVs. According to the International Energy Agency's Global EV Outlook report, official sales data from the United States, China, and Europe show that 95% of the nearly 14 million electric cars sold in 2023 were in these three regions. 
sales of electric cars increased by 3.5 million in 2023, compared to 2022, marking a 35% year-on-year rise. This figure is more than six times higher than the sales in 2018. In fact, more electric cars were registered each week in 2023 than in all of 2013, with a weekly total exceeding 250,000. This puts the achievements of Formula E over the past decade into perspective. However, it doesn't guarantee a secure future. While Formula E may continue to carve out its own niche, even as Formula One becomes more electrified, global socioeconomic factors could disrupt its progress. This underscores the importance of the Gen 4 or rulebook for the future of Formula E. How far F1 can go on its electrification journey remains to be seen, reflected Dodds. Can F1 and Formula E learn from each other? Lola is the newest addition to Formula E's future grid. It began its journey in Formula E with Yamaha and Apt, and it has set ambitious goals. However, the company also intends to use Formula E as a springboard for other electric vehicles, sports-related projects. According to Mark Preston, the company's motorsport director, there will be knowledge that goes back into some of the F1 developments as well. And because Formula E benefited from the KERS work in F1, I think there'll be a lot of learning that flows between Formula E and Formula One. Preston continued, I think there will be a lot of learning from Formula E that will influence Formula One powertrains, even if it's through the supply chain that supports both. He added, Although there are significant differences between how the cars operate, with Formula E's full regenerative braking system and massive amounts of energy recovery, there are still many technical contrasts compared to F1. Still, it will be intriguing to see how their future racing evolves. In motorsport, standing still means falling behind. As the old saying goes, that might seem harsh when compared to Formula E, which has struggled to capitalize on peak viewership in key markets. Like many racing series, Formula E had to bounce back from the pandemic and subsequent material and component shortages. It may have been impacted more severely than others, but now is the time for strong acceleration, both on and off the track. It may not matter immediately whether or when F1 makes significant strides with its enhanced electric future, but Formula E is aware that it will need to make a mark when the Gen 4 cars come into play. These vehicles will incorporate technological advancements, such as being lighter and offering faster acceleration. In the near future, Formula One could ideally adopt maximum energy recovery and renewable fuels, which would bolster its reputation for sustainability. Since Formula E is a specification based competition, F1 designers and manufacturers may drive battery technology development more than Formula E. However, Formula E may still lead the way in the structure of racing and sports, which could be seen as a downside for Formula One. Formula One, on the other hand, is planning to use active aerodynamics to alter drag levels and incorporate battery deployment as an overtaking aid, replacing DRS along with a new override option. But until these rules are implemented on the track, the actual impact on racing quality remains to be seen. When Formula E's new regulations are compared to F1's, these complexities might give Formula E an edge. Only time will tell. Even though its much older, wealthier, and more popular sibling, F1, is encroaching on Formula E's territory, for now, Formula E still controls its own destiny.